G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and in today's video we're back in Journey Builder I'm going to show you how to use the Salesforce data entry event so you can inject new leads or contacts into your journeys when their record is created. So today we'll start off in Journey Builder and we'll create ourselves a brand new journey. We'll go create journey in the top right hand side and choose a multi-step journey followed by create. Okay, so here we have our brand new multi-step journey. Now for our first step, we should probably rename our journey to something that's more meaningful. So let's change this to new record. Go enter. Now for the activity today, we're going to use the Salesforce data entry event. So onto our entry source, we can drag and drop our Salesforce data, just like that, and then left click on it to open up our settings. Now we're not going to use the Salesforce campaign or community welcome today. We're going to choose the Salesforce data event. So I'll choose that one and go next. Now on this screen, we have to choose the object we want the journey to listen to. That is the object to which a change can occur and add or update. And if that change occurs on that object, we can inject the record into our journey. Now we could just use contacts or users or any of these other many, many objects within our marketing, within our CRM, sorry. But for today, we're going to use our lead object. So I can scroll down to lead or I can search for it just here. Go lead and there is our lead object. Once we choose our lead object, we have to choose who to inject into the journey. Do we want to inject the user that created this record? Or the user who modified the record? Or the user who owns the record? Well, no, we want to try and inject the actual user themselves. So we can choose the actual lead ID, the lead as a person, the lead as a human. So we can see we've chosen the lead ID there. Once we have, we can go next. Now on this screen, it's our entry criteria. That is, even though records do change, get modified and updated, we can apply some criteria. Now for today we're going to choose the is created. We can also add some criteria though. So for example, we could say we only want leads where, of course, the email address is not null. That's a good start. If it's a marketing email, we should probably put where the email opt-out is also false. Where email opt-out is equal to false. They have not opted out of email. It's probably a good start for marketing now. So with that done, we can now go next onto our filter criteria. And here's where you can use a filter to change how our relationship is for this lead against other objects. Now for today, we're not going to have any filter, so we can just move on to our next step. Now here we can choose what data we want to inject into the journey. Now obviously the lead record here has a few fields, our email, the opt-out and lead ID. We probably want to personalize the email as well. So we can jump onto our lead object and bring in some more fields. Now, what else do we want to bring in? Probably first name, that's a good start. And since we're there, maybe last name as well. What else could we bring in there? We've got mobile opt-out, mobile phone, and mobile country code, of course required for SMS. Capture all those, and we'll probably leave it as there for a test today. Of course, you can go through and add additional fields. Plus, because the lead object is related to other objects within your Salesforce CRM, we can jump back and also pick up other related objects. So for example, we could choose the lead's owner. So if you have a look here, a lead does in fact have an owner ID. There it is there, which we could bring in. We could jump back and return back the owner as a user and return back the owner's first name. So there we are there, the owner's ID and first name. We'll leave those in for now so I can show you how that works. But with our data selected, we can choose next Check out our summary, we are going to listen to the lead as a human on the object of the lead object. And the action of created takes place and that brand new created lead has a set email and their opt-out is false. Then we're going to insert this data into our journey. All right, sounds good. We can click done and that's going to complete our journey entry event. Perfect. What we should do here though is just save our journey where we are. The reason we do this, when we press save, it's actually going to create a brand new data extension for us, just like that. Which we're going to need if we want to port an email activity into this journey. So let's now jump over into our content builder and let's have a quick look at building an email. So what we'll do today, and we'll jump in content builder and go create a brand new email message. Now with this, we're going to choose an email message with a template. We're going to choose a nice empty blank template and go select. We'll call this one our new lead email. Now I'll go next to start building up this email. And what we're going to do today is just do a really quick HTML block. 
So we want to try and test some personalization for this email. So we could say, hi, name, uh, next line, go uh, this record was created by, and the owner name, just like that. So we need to try and populate the name of the lead and the name of the owner. Now to do this, there's one cool trick. We can use our personalization box here. So we can jump up and we can choose a new data source. Now, that data extension that's created in our journey will create itself in our data extensions folder. And there it is there. We've got our new record journey. So we can choose that data extension and go, go. That's gonna make sure we load in all the fields and straight away you can see how the fields look. So we do know that the lead's first name is lead first name. So we can click on our name here and insert lead first name, just like that. As you can see, it puts the exact correct syntax to return back that lead's first name. Additionally, this record was created by and the owner name. So we can scroll on here and scroll down and hopefully we find the lead owner user first name, just like that. All right, looking good. That'll do for our email and we'll just call this one, actually I've got the first name here, so we'll call it high first name. And done, and we'll save that email. Now, of course, there's no records in our data extension just yet, so we can't really test out this email. But instead, we can go back to our journey and put the email into our journey canvas here. So we can scroll down into our activities and we can drag and drop our email activity onto our canvas and choose our brand new email. And once this loads, because we just created this email in Content Builder, it should show up at the top of our emails. We'll go select message. And hopefully it's the very top. There it is there, new lead and go summary. So for our send, we're going to send this email out to our first name, to our subscribers, all the rest there looks pretty good. So I'll go done. Additionally, let's change our wait step down just so we can check our records more quickly. There we are. All right, that's our journey looking pretty good. So we'll save our activity so far. There we are. And let's activate it. Actually, before we do, we have to set our journey activity uh, settings here. So of course we want there to be enter any time for now. We use our email address and phone number if we're doing our phone. Good one, we'll go done. Now we can save. All right, we'll check out our journey, make sure all of our script is looking good. Make sure there's no mistakes. And hopefully looking good, return a draft and let's activate our journey. Activate. Perfect. So from this moment onwards, any new leads that get, uh, get created inside of my Salesforce CRM instance is going to result in that record being injected into this journey. So with our journey created, and hopefully you're on your way, let's now jump into Salesforce CRM and make ourselves a brand new record. Okay, so now we're over in our Salesforce sales cloud. And let's start off by creating ourselves a brand new contact. So I can jump into my dev org here and I'm going to choose to create a new action or a new record. I choose to make a brand new lead. All right, so for our new lead, we of course have to fill out their name. So a citation, it's going to be a doctor test record. And for our email address, I'll fill an email address in just a second. Our company will be tester. And we might leave the rest of this one all blank. So I'll put an email address in. All right, and then we'll go on save. Now, hopefully we're gonna have ourselves a brand new test record. Our test was created, perfect. Let's have a look at test record. Okay, doctor test records being created, perfect. Let's jump back into our journey builder and have a look at our journey so far. Check the entry results so far into this activity. There's nothing here just yet, that's all right. We can jump back into our journeys and hopefully we shortly see a new record coming in. Keep refreshing it, go back to our entry results. There we are. One contact has been evaluated. Not accepted just yet though, so we'll jump back and we'll see if it's coming in just yet. Back to our journeys, refresh it. And in mind of fact, see there he is coming through already. Our doctor test records coming through. You can check our entry results. One evaluated, one accepted. We can click on that blue text and have a closer look at that record as well. You can see there is our contact key. Our new record was triggered into our journey. Perfect. I can close out the event information here and have a look at some other events that might have taken place. So I can clear all 
let's have a look at this new record journey. And sure enough, here's our records. So they were permitted into the journey, accepted into the journey. Um, you can see from the timestamps on the side here, there it is. They came in at 32 seconds past. And a few seconds later, they were completing some activities, starting the interaction, and a new email was sent and completed. And there you have it. That's how you can use the Salesforce data entry event to enter your newly created contacts or lead records into your Salesforce Marketing Cloud journeys. And if you enjoyed today's activity, please let me know in the comments below and with a big thumbs up on the video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you are notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.